Come tea, come tea with me. Hello and welcome to another edition of Come Tea With Me. And in this edition, I'm going to be looking at footage of and commenting on my old self. This would be when I was 13, 14, 15. Um, I stopped vlogging on YouTube when I was 16. Um, and this was on my old channel, which was X Antonio Lovelace X, which I will um, drop down below. I stopped using um, that channel, um, which is a shame because I had so many subscribers, but it was that old thing of like, I changed my email address. Um, I lost the password. I couldn't get the password back because I no longer had access to the email. So that was the end of that. Um, so all the videos on there were before I was anorexic, but I still had an eating disorder. Um, so it's kind of interesting because I'm of this generation where we have video footage um, of our older selves. So we can't really escape um, the truth of what we were. And nor can we hide it from the world. I mean, I chose to share um, things on YouTube because I wanted someone to talk to. I didn't really feel um, that open, like I didn't have many friends, like I explained before. I found it easier to kind of just sort of be open and tell the world things. And, and looking at some of the comments that people used to leave on my old videos, they were really quite offensive comments. Um, some of them were quite rude. And of course, now I see them through the eyes of an adult. I can see what they were seeing when they look at this child who's posting things online because I never really felt like a child. Um, I never really felt like I was a child posting these things. So um, now I look at it now, I, c I see it for what it was. Um, I don't regret it at all. A lot of people said, oh, you'll, you'll regret it because of all the extreme makeup and how you looked and um, the things you were saying about gender and all of this. And, and I thought, I was thinking the whole time, why would I regret anything in life? I don't think anyone should regret anything they do. You should always live in the moment because at that moment it was what you wanted. And um, you should apply that to all areas of your life, in my opinion. So YouTube was no different for me. Um, I first started it in 2007. I do believe I was 13 years old. And at the time I thought I was a transgender male. Um, my first video I posted was in a very tiny voice. Um, so yeah, I think I might actually start my little video jug rewind with a clip of my very first YouTube video. God help you, here it is. Hello, um, this is my first video. I'm a 14 year old trans man, and um, basically I just wanted to say thanks for all the great posts and stuff that you put on there. Um, it's very good. Um, I'm not exactly out yet, well I am, but I'm not, if you get what I mean. Like, my family know, but they don't accept things very much and my friends don't know but um yeah, I just want to say hi it's my first video um I want to leave comments leave comments and I would look free <laughs> um yeah I'd be interested to know what people have to say about the issue because not a lot of people sort of speak about it do they you know it's helped me a lot the people on YouTube like if I feel down with my depression that it helps. So, um, yeah. Hi. <laughs> so when I look at that now, um, I just think I was cute. Like, I would adopt this person. But, like, the thing I noticed most is I had, like, a Minnie Mouse voice back then. I'm not really sure what happened. I mean, I found out, um, since that I'm actually intersex. So, um, my hormone levels are not are not what you would classify in a normal range so I don't I never experienced a voice drop as such but my voice definitely is a lot lower now um, than it was back then um, what would I say to this person I would say you need this you need it now you need it to express who you are you need to start showing people your talents because um, at the time I was aware I was talented like a lot of people would tell me you've got such um, artistic and musical talents um, 
but at that time I didn't know how to utilize it because I didn't live in a city I was very far away I was very isolated so really I guess I used YouTube um, as a way of, of expressing myself and um, I recorded all my songs at home um, I used I think it was a lot the logic hit kit it was a very rudimentary program of multi-tracking so I used to just literally record layers um, on a keyboard on a piano I did vocals harmony so all my older stuff was recorded in logic hit kit I then progressed to Pro Tools um, and then when I left home went to uni I learned basic skills on how to use logic which is a different thing entirely it's a lot um, it's a more professional program it's, it's what a lot of the, the actual top producers use and I, I couldn't make head nor tail of it I'm not technologically minded I'm artistic I'm not I'm crap at all things to do with technology so really if I could do with anything it's a music production person hint hint um, but uh, yeah i did all of those when i was 13 and it was mainly to be noticed to have something that was me um i needed a way to express myself and i'm, I'm so glad that i did it now i'm so glad that i wasn't um i didn't just hide away and feel bad about my situation because i felt i felt very frightened at that time because obviously everyone else was going through puberty um finding you know the man they were or the woman they were was how it looked from my perspective and I felt like I couldn't grow up I couldn't become anything because I was trapped in this form and, and there's some quite disturbing videos on there about how I tried to bind my chest and stuff like this with sellotape and it actually got infected and I mean all of this is on the channel if it's of interest to you um, that channel had more subscribers by far than this one does so obviously these issues and obviously it being a young person makes it far more appealing <laughs> because people just love the mind of the youth I do myself I find it fascinating um, what younger people make of the adult world we live in um, and I guess add to that a few quite crappy homemade music videos and uh, chats about quite large topics and uh, it, it garnered quite a lot of uh, interest again both good and bad I, I did get a stalker who turned out I did track down who he was he turned out to be some crazy American guy who'd been in a jail and his name was Resky um, which is going to be a separate video called undetected killer the truth I did find out who he was and he wasn't your average troll so um, yeah it's uh, it's it was fun it wasn't a normal definitely not a normal adolescence but it was never going to be anyway you know and this was my argument the whole time was that if I'm not going to be able to do the normal things that other kids were doing then why not do what I wanted to do which was you know I'd go to school and I'd come home and I, I would just rehearse piano insanely for long long hours long periods of time because it was an intense focus of mine and it was a talent again that I was born with I never got taught how to play the piano so for me it was like a distraction I used to draw a lot um, I'll do a separate video as well on my art work that I did back then um, I still do draw now I don't get so much time to do it now I, re I really want to get back into that because um, I find it therapeutic as well it's good for your mental health it's good for your well-being to draw or be artistic in, in any way you want to be um, so yeah art, being artistic in itself is very very healthy um but i'm going on this is supposed to be about videos so anyway the next video i'm going to show you is of me putting on my makeup which i wore every day back then um if you haven't seen my video on body dysmorphic disorder i couldn't see quite how extreme the makeup was um it was very artistic i had positive negative comments i would just go out and do normal things looking this way so here is uh, Funny Valentine, sweet comic Valentine, you make me smile with my heart. Your looks are laughable, unphotographable, yet you're my favorite. 
work of art Is your figure less than Greek? Is your mouth a little weak? When you open it to speak Are you smart? Don't change your hair for me Not if you care for me Stay, little Valentine Stay Each day is Valentine's Day that was what it was um i really like it now i can appreciate it from an artistic point of view um i went through a phase when i was 19 20 of, of kind of paranoia thinking oh my god what did i look like because i kind of toned everything down i was kind of preparing to transition into a man you know i was kind of like i was just kind of thinking that this was obviously just me being um in a lot of distress which i was in a lot of distress mentally um but that wasn't the reason why i was putting the makeup on i think the makeup for me was a self-expression and as i said i was big into the 80s the new romantics and this kind of very heavy pigmented colorful look so um i still am into that as you can probably tell <laughs> i quite like my makeup and my excessive dressing up but like for me then it was an everyday thing like all day every day um, I don't, uh, well I do, but like, it depends what I'm doing for the day, like I won't go crazy if I'm having a day off and not wear the makeup now. Um, and now I realise it had nothing to do with gender for me then, and it doesn't for me now either. I was just seeing beyond that, so I'm quite happy just to sit on the fence of gender. In, society can do what the hell it likes, I've never considered myself a part of it anyway, I'm just kind of here. Do you know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people feel the same anyway. Like society, what is that? Who is it exactly? I can't pinpoint. So, um, yeah, that was me putting on my makeup. And here is me taking off my makeup.
I certainly would never take off my makeup like that now. Um, I used to use Baby. I, I can't quite see what that was there, the product exactly, but um, I used to just slather it all over my face. It was usually Johnson's Baby Oil. I just used to swipe it off. No thought for any wrinkles it might be causing or anything like that. Um, touch wood, I've reached pretty much nearly 25 years of age and I don't really have any wrinkles at all. Um, I've somehow managed to preserve my skin. Um, again, is it good or bad to wear makeup that's very heavy? Because again, a lot of the pollution is in the air. So I guess if you're wearing quite a lot of foundation or cover up on your face, you're kind of covering it from all the pollution in the air also. So there are many ways of looking at makeup. So you shouldn't just look at it as all poison on the skin. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that that was a uh, it was what it was, and like I said, I really don't regret it now. I'm really happy that I did what I did um, online at the time. It gave me a real release, and um, I enjoyed uh, hearing other people's comments. Um, there was a girl who took one of my songs and did a makeup tutorial video to it, and one of my songs got I think it was sixty three thousand views or something. It was called Silent Violet. I'll link that below. It was very popular online at the time. For me, I mean, to be 13, that's quite a lot of views for me, I thought. Um, yeah, and it's a shame that I lost a lot of subscribers, obviously, when I stopped posting. So, I mean, most of them would have lost interest now. And, of course, the YouTube itself in the last 10 years has totally exploded. That's not the same arena whatsoever. So, you know, I was quite content um, just with my little few people on there that used to talk to me and send me things and post me nice stuff and you know I've met a lot of really nice people through YouTube so um yeah I agree with YouTube for teenagers I know some people say it's maybe not a good idea and it's probably a lot more hostile now even than it was back then um but I actually think it's really good for teenagers to to use the internet to express themselves um I mean, now it's very easy to feel very insignificant because we didn't have the social media then that we have now. I mean, we had MySpace, which is like a ghost town now. If you look, at it's all like these dead profiles of people with seen haircuts and stuff. But um, no, I mean, like the launch of people who are still popular now, like Jeffree Star, Kat Von D, it was all that same kind of era. It launched out of the scene kids movement that was around that time, which... Um, I wasn't a participating scene kid. I was just into my own like little thing about the 80s. But um, I did listen to some of the music. I knew a lot of people that were, you know, the emos and the scene people. So, um, again, uh, the internet has transformed in itself since then. So, I mean, people feel a lot more insignificant now. I think there's, um, there's obviously the major channels on YouTube, which get a lot of views. Um more views i think now uh than, than any channel did back then um i remember there was magibon um i had somebody link my channel with magibon and chris crocker stuff and sort of mash the videos together to try and help me get more views and um yeah that kind of worked it did get a lot more views it was my song called night walker which i also linked below um which got quite a lot of exposure from people that were posting it around again it's not any real like major thing but like if you're young and you're in the internet age it's nice to know people appreciate what you do i'm not saying the songs are of any great quality because i don't think they were um i think that having done all of it myself all the videos myself or all, all the credit myself i can only credit myself as a 13 year old 14 year old 15 year old doing these things um, anything I did on this channel is from 16 years old onwards. This channel started when I was 16, um, when I decided to recover from anorexia and I wanted to go back on YouTube because I'd had a long break because I was literally too sick to film anything. Um, and I found that I'd lost my password, so I started up this channel and I did a song called Madness about the fashion industry. I used an Alexander McQueen um, fashion show. I just sort of pinched the video or parts of the video um because i thought his his fashion shows were just fantastic i loved lee mcqueen i thought he was brilliant um i loved his fashion designs i used to um buy vogue back in the day and um i read a lot of articles about him and obviously i know i'm fascinated about his friendship with isabella blow who i also just love and um i just think uh 
he was an absolute genius and so was she and that that whole story is quite tragic if you haven't read into the um friendship and life of Lee McQueen and Alex um Alexander McQueen and Isabella Blow um read up about them they're truly iconic people um so yeah I I was into all that kind of thing I liked fashion and and then of course you see I think this is why people assumed I was quite confused about my gender and I didn't feel confused about my gender I was quite certain that I wasn't female but I was quite also certain that I liked these things I was very certain of that and I still am certain of it now so the journey I've had has been kind of going around like I tried to fit in when I realized that you know people are always going to see me as female so I thought oh, I'm gonna have to try and do something here and again I just always felt kind of fraudulent and it, and it wasn't for me so um and here's just a clip a random clip of me playing the piano uh, not looking at the piano, being a bit of an idiot. <laughs> just me being a prat and showing off my piano skills and it wasn't very good I made mistakes I think that was Chopin um, I can still do it now uh, but I led quite a solitary life outside of school um, I did get away with wearing quite a lot of makeup to school I'll give them that uh, All in all, I'm just hoping this doesn't trigger a depression because like when I look back at my old life, I find it sometimes does that, um, especially as a lot of it was overshadowed with eating disorders. Like I said, like I wasn't anorexic or I didn't fall into a weight category of being anorexic at the time, um, but I certainly wasn't eating enough. Uh, I used to literally just live on beans and, and rice and, and that was pretty much all I ate back then because I, I was really... Before that, I was a little overweight and I was teased for it. So, um, yeah, I was I was always on a permanent diet. So I wasn't very happy. Um, a lot of the time when I was posting those videos, I was, I was very un unhappy. And um, it was a great distraction for me. So YouTube for me at the time, I look at it now and I'm so glad I did it. Because I have like a, it's like a little... Um, digital diary, I guess. And I think a lot of people my age would say the same thing. Um, I still don't think we've had anyone as funny as Chris Crocker on online. Um, there are some borderline... Actually, there's none. I really think Chris Crocker is great. And he's, he's gone on to lead his own life and do his own thing. And he really don't give a shit. He really don't give a shit. And, uh... Yeah. Yeah, he, he, was, he was fantastic, Chris Crocker. And, uh... I think people underestimate the power of YouTube. It's a very powerful thing. Um, it enables you to reach out to people who are alike to yourself if you feel a little like you're on your own and you're a little bit weird or whatever. So, um, yeah, like I said, being 13 as well, it kind of, it got me some attention from bad places and I was mature enough uh, beyond my years perhaps at the time to kind of not react to it because I knew it was just some prat from another continent that I would never see do you know what I'm saying but it's uh it's quite scary it begun to get quite frightening because he used to make um these like mashed up troll type videos of of wanting to kill me and and somebody was screaming on an answer phone or something it was beginning to get a little bit strange um, I did wonder for a long time, I just thought it was maybe perhaps somebody at school because they, they kind of knew about my YouTube channel. I think perhaps people just thought I was a bit stupid or um, that I had problems. And I don't expect people of that age to understand like someone as complex as me. I mean, I was having trouble understanding my my 
I guess my spiritual age was a heck of a lot older perhaps than most people's like some people that got it really got it like I just didn't care I, I just adopted that attitude of just not caring because it was the easiest thing to do um but yeah For me, I, I really don't think there was a way I could have survived without um, having the ability to post YouTube videos. And uh, so, yes, um, as a final clip, uh, I'm going to select this song for you. Um, Which is one of my favourite ones that I did, and it's called Death in Hollywood, and it's about um, my favourite icon, Michael Jackson, um, and at the time when he died in 2009, I posted it online, so I'm going to leave you guys with that now. Um, I hope this finds you well. Um, thank you for sitting through this crazy video. Um, and I hope to see you soon for another edition of Come Tea With Me. Subscribe to my old channel if you please, look through it all. Um, I'd love to know what you make of the old me compared to the new me. I am kind of quite aware that I've changed quite a lot more than I thought I had. So, uh, yeah. This was Come Tea With Me. Um, come Tea With Me again. I hope you do. Um, like, share, subscribe. Um, see you soon.